All right, here we go. This is like the no huddle of podcasts. We go up tempo here with the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals, Cliff Kingsbury, Lisa Matthews, yours truly, Paul Calvisi. And I know one person in this room who is not cursing his bracket for March Madness. That's all I'm going to say. The his question, or her bracket. Right. <laughs> Have you come to gloat, though? I think that is the question, Cliff Kingsbury. You brought it up, so I feel like <laughs> exactly. we should talk about it. Get you your know? money's worth. You love yes. talking about yes. it when you're doing good. but No question. Good. No, we're, we're fired up, all Red Raiders across the world. That's a big deal. And um, what a great team to watch, a fun team to watch how hard they play defensively, as good as any I've ever seen. So it's, it's going to be a fun Final Four for us. So did you create a bracket amongst friends and family? Or, I mean, you have to be able to smack talk about this for quite some time amongst them. <laughs> yeah, no, I just, uh, I'm a huge fan of, obviously, um, that university and, and that basketball coach there, Chris Beard. He's phenomenal and uh, a great friend and just excited to see what they've done. They've really inspired a lot of people, and, and rightfully so. Can, can you take things away from other coaches in other sports? Do you watch other coaches who are exceptional in their sport, even though it has nothing to do with football, perhaps? Yeah, no question. You can always you know, try and learn, especially you know, reading articles um, about how they coach and where they came from and, and philosophies they have. Uh, I think we're always trying to pick things up. Even Larry, he just spoke to the Diamondbacks. And, you yeah, know, that's right. We're all professionals here, but I take something from you, and you take something from me here. So I loved your quote on Larry, by the way. Yeah. Where was it? Winning it. You never seen anyone win. Was that again? You win never? at life. Yeah, something <laughs> to that extent. <laughs> never like, seen anyone win at life like Larry. perspective, <laughs> what yes. he can get done and accomplish and, and how he handles himself and, and uh, the successes he's had in every arena, it's, it's just incredible to watch. It's also amazing, like, the names that he has in his cell phone. I mean, if he really wanted to name drop. And, 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 anybody. And, anybody. 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 I mean, Although we did ask him, and he did reveal there were two names that were most meaningful to him. Muhammad Ali, back in the day, rest in peace, and then wow. Tiger Woods, because of his affinity wow. for golfing, that Tiger will drop him a text every <laughs> once in a while to go, wow. I bet that's a big one for that's him. Still, that's his wow moment. Yeah, that still him. gets him yeah. excited. Yeah. All right, so speaking of uh, cell phones, uh, yeah. <laughs> I shake my head because you did this whole 50-minute interview during the breakfast meeting with the media at the NFL owners. And, and I saw the whole thing. I wasn't there, but I saw the whole thing word for word. And I thought it was an aside, you mentioning <laughs> cell phone breaks for players. And it blew up nationally. I didn't think twice about it, to I be honest. Either. But and Yeah, it's uh, we, we don't meet as long, maybe. Traditionally, we don't sit them in there for an hour and a half. And we'll split it up 30 minutes, 45 minutes at a time and I had talked about how our players would run to their locker room to get their cell phones and I was like yeah kind of cell phone breaks and then uh, the slow news cycle and uh, went from there. But you've been on that side as a player and just going through the meetings and you need those breaks just mentally just to get up and whether you take your cell phone with you I mean I have my cell phone with me all the time millennial you can say but you just need those whatever you're doing during those breaks is up to you you're a man yeah, you're no a grown question. woman so you're allowed to use that time to yeah, yourself yeah it's, it's more just trying to maximize our meeting time and, and there's been studies done that you know you can only this generation can focus for so long and, and then it's it's kind of diminishing returns so while they're in there we want it to be maximized and focused and, and give them a little break and come back in and regroup and do it again. My favorite was when the Wall Street Journal tweeted out an article from 2015 hey, yeah. that Jim Tom Sula had the same policy. Yeah. So, But for some reason, it sparked this debate. I, I don't know if it's because you're the new head coach and you're and, and I think a lot of other head coaches are curious about what you might do. And my other takeaway from the coaches, uh, was the coaches clinic you did at the owner's meeting. And it was what, designed for high school coaches? Right. Okay, and there on the front row over in the corner is John Gruden, <laughs> and he was locked in. Asked the toughest question of the day, too. <laughs> did he really? What did he ask? Yeah. He asked if we were gonna take uh, a certain quarterback from Oklahoma. <laughs> oh, he's so even we had, There's about four or five high school coaches that asked good questions about the drill tape and what we do and philosophies. And then, you know, he raised up his hand. <laughs> Hey Kingsbury, I got one for you. you know? <laughs> I love it. So it was it was pretty funny, but the coaches That's enjoyed good. it, and um, I thought it was cool that he stuck around because a lot of those guys, there were uh, some head coaches that that stayed in there and just wanted to get better, wh whether it was offensive football with Doug Peterson talking or you know Dan Quinn and, and um, Rivera came after us and, and did a great job. So it, it was cool to uh, be a part of that. I see Gruden trying to get the inside scoop over yeah. here. What, what, what was the answer? Is that classified? What was your answer to Coach Gruden, if I might ask? I think I asked him 
Yeah, I said, it depends how many first-round draft picks you have. And he's like, I got three. So, <laughs> a little banner back okay. and forth. All right. yeah. sure. I mean, it wouldn't, be a, it wouldn't be a meeting without some negotiation at this, <laughs> yeah, this time of year, to, right? Had to have fun. Yeah. But it, it was, it was uh, um, having recruited out here, the high school football um, is an incredible at an incredible level. And it's just gotten better and better. I probably started recruiting out here in 2010, um, and there's been great players, Christian Kirk, you know, Kyle Allen, Mark Andrews, to name a few. Um, and just to see how it's gotten better and better, and it's a credit to those coaches. So it, it was uh, really an honor to be a part of that clinic. And, of course, one of the greatest to play for you, Patrick Mahomes. And speaking of head coaches and phones and having fun, you had Sean McVay revealing the following. We're going to play this from the Adam Schefter podcast. We went to dinner with, uh, you know, he's got a relationship with Pat Mahomes, and, and uh, we did that. And, you know, I, I kind of tricked him into thinking that he was going to be in trouble with the league with tampering and stuff like that. And I think his assistant got all wigged out. He was worried about losing picks and said he better call Steve Kime. But fortunately, it was all legal, and, and we had a good time. It was wait, good to see wait, him. Wait, hold on. So, so I want to hear a little bit about how you tricked him into yeah. thinking that he was tampering. So, I want the details So here. we have a, uh, a mutual friend that I uh, put his name in my phone as Roger Goodell. And uh, I had this friend send me a text saying, I can't believe you're at dinner with Kingsbury and Mahomes. You know better than this. This is tampering. You're both losing picks. And I showed Cliff the text, and uh, the, he, the, he saw a ghost. I said, you better call Steve Kime right away. He said, oh, I thought I was going to lose the number one overall pick. And we couldn't let it go on too long, but it was pretty good. I'm pretty proud of that one, Adam. Oh, he, he's definitely proud of that one. Just what was your – I mean, he talked about your, your – it ruined dinner. Yeah, okay. It ruined dinner. <laughs> I bet. Hard had to drop it. I almost threw up. Um, but no, it was it was well done. He played it off, and he had the phone. He's like, he never texts me, man. This is not good. And I'm like, oh my god. Um, so it was uh, it was a, a well done prank, and and uh, he's got one coming. So yeah, I, yeah, I was going to say that. Another item on the off season to do list, right there. No doubt. Well, you know, players have their welcome to the NFL moment. There's your welcome he's to the been taking fun at you though. Yeah. You know what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh... But do you think a lot of the other coaches are curious? We know head coaches are ultra competitive, pathologically competitive. We might say, and I think a lot of them are wondering, well, what is Kingsbury all about and his system all about? And I'm guessing a lot of them don't want to play you in the first month because there's no film out there. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, you know, there's college film and and uh, you know what we've done in the past, but. I've said it all, all along since I took the job is, is we take a lot of pride in adapting to our personnel and doing what we do well um, and, and what maximizes our talent, and, and that's what we're going to try and do here. So until we get these players back and um, get that draft over with and, and uh, figure out who we've got, um, I, I don't even know what it's going to look like yet, but, but excited to start working with those guys. So what does this week look like heading into OTAs? Uh, start on Monday. So, are you guys meeting? Um, obviously, going through the draft board and everything like that. So, what is this week kind of just laid out for us? We are, yeah. The mornings will, will be a lot of um, installations and, and tightening those things up in our film. So, when we present next week to the players, um, it's in a good format. And then the afternoons, going through some draft meetings and trying to kind of finalize some thoughts there before we get there in a couple weeks. So, at Tech, you only had a video playbook. Is that what you said? We did. So you've had to put the playbook into print. That has had to be an undertaking. We have. It's been quite a process <laughs> to get it all all um, down on paper, but it, it's been fun at the same time. It's allowed me to really go back and um, streamline some things and, and bring some better terminology that makes more sense. Things kind of get twisted up over that many years at the same place, which makes sense to you but may not um, from, a, from an outsider's perspective. So it's, I think it's been a good process. So you've talked to the media far more than you've spoken to your own team. I mean, you haven't had your first official team meeting yet. No. How, how often do you play that no. in your head a little bit? How, I mean, that's a significant moment, isn't it? Yeah, I think not as much as one would think. I mean, at this point, there's uh, a lot of your team isn't even going to be there. You know, So it's more about, hey, let's get back into this um, routine and, and start working towards getting better. And it's a slow kind of first phase when you're just talking about workouts and, and meetings. And so it's not a, a time for the win one for the giver speech. That, <laughs> right. That'll come later. But so it's, you don't have notes already. No, That's it's more plan. about, you know, our processes, how we do things, um, the expectations, and, and just getting back in, in the groove a little bit. We have a good question coming from Facebook. It's from Alex Cutler. He wants to know, what is the foundation of your offensive scheme? Mm. Yeah, I think it, you know, it starts – 
with some of those air raid principles when you're talking about how mommy and Mike Leach and, and um, then I, I was fortunate enough to bounce around a bunch of different offensive systems and try to pick different things that um, I thought were quarterback friendly and, and thought that um, were tough on defenses and, and have kind of blended all that together and try to evolve as, as we've gone but I, I'd say the the basis of it is, is some of those um, air raid principles. But you don't use the term air raid. That's no, not accurate. That's, that's not our offense. I mean, that's that's the Hal Mummy, Mike Leach, um, and everybody's kind of taken their version of it. But those are the originators, and and they are kind of the purists of, of that offense. <laughs> Is there any reason a pass heavy offense can't succeed in the NFL? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, you, you look at how that trend is, is going in, in the league. I think there was only one team in the league last year that ran it more than they threw it, um, which that um, hasn't always been the case. And, and so I think more and more people are, are throwing the football around. And, I, I, you know, it remains to be seen. Another good question from Facebook as we get ready to hit the field once again. What is your all-time favorite football movie? Movie. Movie. Mm. Football movie. Get you pumped up. Well, you're ready. from Texas. Probably Lowell. Friday Night Lights. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to guess. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Um, when, when you talk about your offense, and, and, and you get asked about Kyler Murray from a John Gruden, do you need that dual threat quarterback to unlock and unleash the full potential of your offense? No, I, I don't think so. I, I think um, it's about building your, your system around the quarterback and playing to his strengths. And, and as you know, um, a quarterback's only as good as his surrounding cast a lot of times. And so it has to be the right situation. And um, as a play caller, you got to be able to do things that, that he feels comfortable with and, and uh, maximize who he is as a player. And so I, I don't think it takes a certain type of skill set as much as it does, you know, having the right talent around him and, and, and being able to uh, pick the right, the right plays for him to execute. And the reason you push back from April 1st to April 8th, you just you like the symmetry of that, just keep going? Yeah, just to, to roll right through. I think with, uh, once we get started, we want to, you know, keep being consistent day in, day out, week in, week out, and, and – Roll right through. All right, some rapid fire questions here. First one from Robert. Because you grew up in the San San Antonio area, did you ever go to Spurs games and did you like the Rangers or Astros as well? With baseball I was a big up? Spurs fan. David Robinson, Sean Elliott, Vinny Del Negro oh, back wow. back in, in those back, days. Yeah. And, and still, you know, Tim Duncan and, and um, Popovich, I mean huge fan of that organization. And then I was an Astros fan. Um, so this one from Jono. Do you have your prank ready to get back to McVay? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to wait. you got to yeah. wait, let it clear, and then yeah. it's least expected. Least expected. <laughs> you got to let it marinate a little bit. No There's got to be something in there. It'll be hard to top. We'll yeah. find a way. Yeah. Or just beat them come regular season. There you go. There you go. But, but the just ultimate. the fact that you're at dinner with an opposing head coach within your division and, 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 and a quarterback, albeit he played for you, for another team, that illustrates and demonstrates who you were talking about the last time we were talking to you. That's much more uh, of a camaraderie in the NFL mm -hmm. versus you know uh, the, the opponent and, and, and having to recruit against everybody. It's very different for you, isn't it, that climate? Yeah, there's a lot more solidarity, um, I, I think, and it's just a smaller number of coaches, too, and, and um, they understand what each other is going through and um, you know how tough it is. What a tough profession, and, and you're not always competing for players on the recruiting trails and afraid to show your hand on things. And so, what I found is that these guys are very helpful. They're supportive, and and you know everybody wants what, what's best for the other guy. Did you get a good feel of that during owners' meetings here at the Biltmore last week? No doubt, same, same thing. Um, I, I touched base with a lot of those guys prior, but just to see them in person and, and get to talk to them and, and uh, kind of pick their brains a little bit was was really impactful. And how about the war room? Has that been a big part of your day right now as you lead up, what, three weeks plus up until the draft? Yeah, we're working through that. You know, Steve um, has a tremendous staff and, and does a great job with that. And, and it's my first time through it, so I'm learning a lot, asking a bunch of questions and taking it all in. When you hold the number one pick for the first time since 1958, safe to say the phone is ringing. You're, you're getting those John Gruden <laughs> questions. Is, I mean, is the front office getting those questions a lot? We all presume yes. That I mean, there's there's got to be constant chatter leading up to April 25th. I would presume. I think Steve has had his hands full with that, <laughs> with that deal over the last however many months. But as have you. <laughs> he, yeah, he's he's handled it well, and um, it's going to be exciting times for this organization. All right, one last question I have to get in. This is from John Johnson, who wants to know what coach are you most excited to coach against? Oh, that's a tough one. 
I mean, I, I, I'm a huge Pete Carroll fan. Mm-hmm. So um, just what he's done in his career, kind of when I was at New England and then going to USC and then getting into the pros, I just I like the way he carries himself, always positive, high energy. Um, and to do it for so many years at such a high level, you know, he, he's a guy you can look to and, and um, try to emulate. Any special plans to watch Tech in the Final Four? Any superstitions? I, anything I, like that? I like no. watching it by myself. I get nervous. I get really <laughs> nervous. I don't get nervous coaching, um, but when you can't control it and you have friends and people you care about, right. especially that university, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a wreck. So I'll just stay at home and, and uh, keep it to myself. Well, imagine this. When we speak next, two weeks from now, you've actually been on the field or at least had your guys in your presence, right? you actually be able to address and talk to your players. Think about that. No doubt. Can't wait to get them around and and start learning everybody's name and get to know them and building that relationship. And I know our our coaches are the same way. Um, Entirely new staff, so there's a lot of uh, meet and greets to go on. Okay. Coach, appreciate it. Thank you Thank so y'all. much. There you go. Every other Tuesday, the Kingsbury Chronicle podcast. And then in between, we bring in Cardinals coaches. So until then, thanks to Cliff Kingsbury, and we'll see you next time.